What's up my nerds? I got a rig, I'm gonna install a new axe system, do the firmware updates, all the install topics, and show you all the ins and outs. The professor had a box of parts that he turned into a truck and it turns out these are like full metal axles. These are the old Emacs drive shafts, big upgrades from back in the day. And this is a classic, classic uh, SCX-10. The, the scaler that, that started the fever, if you will. I'm gonna turn this into a rad trail rig, maybe use it for some of my Ultra 5K for Axio Fest. We're gonna see, but I'm stoked because Professor builds a fine rig. So everything's set up super nice on this guy and it's all pretty much brand new. The only thing he said I might have to do is maybe get myself some uh, CBD upgrades, but we'll see. So what I'm gonna do is get my brand new axe system installed run through all the soldering, the updates, uh, calibration, all that fun stuff. So first thing with any soldering extravaganza seems to be what kind of iron and what temperature, what solder, all that fun stuff. I use, if I can find it, leaded solder. This is the lead tin rosin core solder, 6040. The rosin core just means it has some flux in it. It's a little easier to deal with. The uh, leaded solder is nice because it's low temperature. Not gonna be as good a, a connection overall, but it, it's a lot easier for hand soldering. Most of the speed controls that you're gonna find there are sold internationally. They come with a, a lead-free solder on them or a high silver, and that's kind of why you need a good hot iron. Iron temperature is gonna be between probably 700 to 850 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. And I like to use a spade iron like that. It's a little bigger than the wire, if you can, to you know get down on the action. This speed control is gonna probably sit in the back of the truck and the battery's gonna go up here. We're gonna do a, a bed free thing and have some stuff going on back here. I'm gonna try to get a real low body. If anything, it's gonna go up in the middle. I have this sweet uh, plate that I got from A Main at Axial Fest a couple years back that goes on the motor plate and then you can mount your electronics here. Regardless, to start out with, for, for mocking up and for the sake of all this, I'm gonna leave everything pretty much full length except for the battery wires. I'm gonna cut this down to about half. When you trim wires, it's important to use strippers because if you don't, you'll end up with little wire frays when you go to uh, strip your wires back. And that will lead to small shards going everywhere and getting in all your things, causing bad connections. So with a pair of strippers, they take the insulation and they don't they don't break if they do and they don't break much but I didn't that's that's all clean and you don't get those broken ends on there always tin your wires and I like to do it so that the wire is going flat or down if I can help it so the solder doesn't run up the wire solder is a bad connector or a bad conductor you don't want to get solder in your wires if you can avoid it because it makes the wire have a bunch of resistance so i do just a little bit make sure i get all the way around the wire and let me make sure that you get an idea there it's not a ton of solder just enough that you can get a good coat on there and still kind of see the strands is it focusing focus let's let's see if i can do this well probably the axe speed control is reverse polarity protected, but you still have to put the wires on correct. It's marked here, and there's red and black uh, insulation on there also. I like to tin these surfaces just a little bit so that when the solder goes to flow, it has a nice place to stick down, or uh, join, if you will. Solder doesn't stick. I like when people say solder dries solder sticks it's not actually accurate boom and boom and you see it's just uh you want to press the wire just a little bit so that it goes through the solder and sits down on the surface if you get like false lipo cut off or shutdowns when you punch it real hard sometimes that can be as simple as your wire floating in the solder so you gotta watch out for that next up the motor wires these guys i like to always start with a fresh cut and make all three of them the same length and get any of the um, factory solder off the wires so that when you go to tin everything it's all the same solder it makes everything work a little bit better if 
you got wires dangling around that can be kind of dangerous so it's good to kind of pin these guys down it's not i mean i got the motor installed in the truck probably not the best way to do it but if you flip the truck on its side you get your wires to lay down flat this way and there we go we got wires laying pretty flat so the, the solder doesn't want to run up there So again, roll on the wire across the solder so that it gets all the way around and you don't get any loose flyer wires going anywhere. And then these guys are going to go straight onto here. Now, censored motors, it is very important to get your A, B, and your C correct. So if this is A, this is B, this is C, easiest way to do it is just one by one. To make sure that you don't put them on in the wrong order. There's a sponge up in the corner next to my solder station that allows the cleaning of the tip, which is very important to your soldering. You want to be able to wipe all the schmutz off that builds up on there. And the wet towel also takes out any stuff that's built up in there and lets it fall into the thing. It keeps your soldering tip clean. All right, there you have it. Five solder joints ready to go. Uh, I like to do a nice visual, make sure that I don't have any loose strands, any solder balls, any stuff like that. If you want to be extra sure and you have a nice little brush, you can give everything a nice wipe down. Like there, see, I just found a solder ball. That can be real bad later on, so I'm going to get that out of there for sure. Oh man, that's really in there. That's actually like a solder stalactite. So we'll reflow all that. And then I like to plug in the sensor wire right away, just so I don't forget. These are keyed. It looks like it's all the same and you can just jam it in there. It's not. There's two little ridges that you got to line up and there's arrows that you can't see very well on camera, but there they are. Screw that guy in and we are pretty much good. This is a pretty old system, so we're definitely going to need an update. First thing we're going to do is open up my Hobbywing link, and then we'll go into turn on the speed control first. And then you're going to connect to the speed control by tapping that little icon, and you check, connect, select your speed control. If it's the first time you've ever connected to it, your password is 888888. That's the default password, six number eights. You hit OK. And then it starts to load the data. And that's what it means when it's talking to the speed control. And then I'm going to go firmware update is my next thing. And you see here, this is 100.107. And I got 10.203 available. So this is a very old speed control. In fact, this is a version 1 speed control. So that's how old this thing is. Um, original, or like release type of thing. So I'm going to hit update. And then to ensure the safety, blah, 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 it's making sure that you don't have it connected because if anything starts to happen, speed control is going to run. You don't want anything engaged. So you hit OK. It starts to update. And then this is going to take some time. That little guy is our percentage. And we want him to get all the way over here. It's going to take a while. So I'm going to set this down and you can enjoy while that all happens. Hopefully we'll uh, fast forward right about now. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Here comes, here comes one hundred. Now, this is very important. See that? See what that says? There is one more step that you have to do. So you hit OK, and now once it exits out of here, it takes a moment. Back up. There's the what that last screen is talking about: the automatic motor pairing. So you exit out of here. Turn the speed control off, and we're going to do the automatic motor pairing process now. This is a involves with the speed control unplugged from the receiver. There's no pinion gear on here either, uh, and it's what it does is it calibrates the FOC system to the rotor. Very very important after you do an update. The whole speed control gets reset. 
it may work okay like you might be able to fire it up and run it but the automatic motor pairing only takes a moment to do so might as well just do it real easy turn the speed control on it'll beep and do its thing and then you just hold the button down and then it starts to blink at you you let go and right now the motor is running you probably you can't see it but the motor is running it runs at a fixed speed and then kind of ramps up a little bit and then it slows down and it stops and it's going to start running again and this also lets you know what direction it turns so it's it's still running it stopped and started running sorry And then once this is done, right about now, it beeps and you've done all the things. Uh, firmware update as well as the automatic motor pairing or what I lovingly call the motor sensor reset. That's it. So now you can turn it off and finish the rest of the install. So we got our wire soldered, we did our firmware update, we did our automatic motor pairing. Now we can connect the speed control to the receiver and do the calibration. The wires are all black and it matters which way it plugs in. If you look on the edge of the plug, there's markings right on the top corner there that'll tell you uh, S is for signal, obviously plus is for positive, the minus is for negative. Most receivers, that negative wire is going to go towards the outside edge. They should be marked on any receiver. Um, one, two, three, four sometimes instead of saying steering throttle and whatever the case may be. The throttle is always going to be number two. That's kind of a universal deal there for our car, car receivers anyway. All right, speed control is plugged into the throttle channel. That should be number two if your, radio, if your receiver doesn't have the numbers on there. But radio is already turned on. These two are all working together already. To do the calibration, you hold on the set button and you turn the power on. Then you're going to do some stuff with the trigger as you tap this set button. So we're going to do that right now. Calibration for... The axe or any of the speed controls for the most part works the same way. So hold down the set button, turn it on, and start to beep. Tap it to set neutral, apply full throttle, tap it again, apply full reverse, tap it again. That's all there is to it. After that, you get operation. Pro tips on the axe. Most people want to know what to do for service and maintenance on these. You take it out every 100,000 miles, remove the motor from the vehicle, give it a wipe down, clean all the dust and debris off the front side bearing, and just give it a drop of oil on there. Uh, usually, the rear of the motor, from my experience, has stayed pretty sealed up, and if you can keep the front side lubed, that'll keep most of the water from running down the shaft of the motor. If you want to get real crazy with it, when you do your build, before you put your pinion gear on, give yourself a daub of marine grease or axle grease, whatever, right on the front there. So you get a big barrier of nasty behind the pinion. And what that does is it stops a lot of the water from running through the bearing, down the shaft of the motor, and then getting inside of everything. Other one that I run into, some vehicles, TRX-4, the Gen 8 Red Cat, even some of the axial rigs, the motor is almost touching the servo, um, especially in a TRX-4. With the 550 motor, this is a big thing, even with some of the installs that are getting a little crazy with body magnets. And what we're getting at here is the servo's motor can be too close to the end of the axe, and it will interfere with the sensors and make the motor do all sorts of goofy stuff. Shutdowns at full throttle, not want to do all sorts of normal operational things. So the, the quick and easy fix is to get a coin that is about the size of the motor. A fender washer works really good. Maybe this is a quarter, and a US quarter, and you see that that's not quite big enough. You might want to go half dollar size, maybe silver dollar, and you just double side tape that on the end of the motor. A fender washer is what I've been told works very well. There was a guy that emailed us that said he had the, the, the simplest fix for the problem that we had been chasing, and it turned out that that was the issue. So if you do have any situations where your servos even you know within a couple millimeters of the end of your motor and you get any sort of goofy stuff go ahead and get a fender washer double side tape that thing on there or a 50 cent piece something to shield the magnetic interference because the sensors are right here and some of the servo motors are so strong that they've got very strong magnets in them and that can wonk out your sensors and you don't want any of that going on that, that's pretty much everything with the axe if you do have any questions comments or concerns feel free to email us north at hobbywing.com Thanks for watching, everybody.